Good morning. It's Coach Jeremy Williams here with Red Hawk Coaching, and I've got a special guest today, our fun advisor for the SOAR community. And fun doesn't necessarily equate to who he is. He's my travel guy, Chris Grom with Premier Custom Travel. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Jeremy from on board Mardi Gras. How are you doing? I'm doing great. This is my first interview where we're actually doing it from a cruise ship. And if you haven't been following the news, the, the cruise ships have been out of out of the water for a little while. And uh, this is one of the first cruises back and it's on board one of Carnival's newest ships, the, the Mardi Gras. So we're going to dive into that, Chris, um, here at the end. And I've seen your pictures. It looks amazing. Uh, but before we get to that, tell me a little bit about Premier Custom Travel. Okay, Jeremy. Well, first of all, thanks for the opportunity. It's always great to be on your show, as it were. Um, and I appreciate all that you're doing for small business owners, because uh, certainly now more than ever, we need that kind of support and that teamwork. Uh, and I think that's where Red Hawk Coaching and the SOAR community has really taken off with that. Um, so Premier Custom Travel is a company that I own. Uh, we are a travel agency, as you might have guessed. Uh, we prefer the term travel advisor. But uh, you can call us whatever you like, as long as you call us. Uh, and we are a company that specializes in uh, cruises primarily. Uh, we sell over 50 different cruise lines. I just happen to be on board Carnival Cruise Line right now. But we do 50 different cruise lines. And, and they're all like children. They all have their own personality. And certainly there's something for everybody within that space. We also do theme park vacations. So we're talking the Disney parks like Walt Disney World, Disneyland. Uh, we sell adventures by Disney, which is uh, something most people don't even know about, which is a way for kids and parents to experience the world together in group travel. Uh, we also sell all inclusives like the Sandals and Beaches Resorts. In fact, um, this past year, we just went exclusive with them. Those are the two all inclusives that we offer. And then we also offer uh, tours worldwide, both guided and independent. Uh, if you can name a destination, we've got a way for you to go there. So that's what we do. And th there's an important point that I do want to add. We do all of that with no charge to you. So, you know, for example, if you wanted to be on this beautiful ship, Mardi Gras, uh, if you go directly to Carnival Cruise Line, you might pay $5,000 for your cruise. You come directly to me, you'll pay the exact same amount, and who knows, maybe even less. Um, but you work with me, you have an email address, and not to pick on Carnival or any of our other suppliers, but name a company that if you book a vacation directly with them, they give you an email address to email, or they give you a cell phone number of somebody to call. Usually it's an 800 number, you'll deal with somebody different every time. You work with me from beginning to the end, and we'll make sure that you're taken care of and all your questions are answered, no matter what time of day you send them to me via text. Yeah, and I can attest to that. We've we've taken several cruises with you. Our family has, and and to have that connection point. First of all, there's usually nothing that ever we have a question of because you've taken care of it all. Yet there's been a few times where we've had a question, and to be able to just reach out to you and say, "Hey, Chris, just could you answer this for us?" and and you had the answer right then, or you were like, "I don't have it, but let me go get it, and I'll give you a call right back." And that's that's just something when you're when you're traveling, it's an investment. And we'll talk a little bit about that in, in our upcoming videos. It's an investment to travel. And so you don't want to screw it up. And um, so no, having, you don't. Yeah. So having somebody like you to, to guide from start to finish, I, you know, I think about our Alaska trip. I mean, we didn't have to worry about anything from our flights to our transfers to the port, to the ship and back. And it was just is one of the greatest experiences ever, and we didn't have to worry about those things. So, um, what led you and to that's, travel? That's the goal every time. Well, and I'm uh, sorry, Jeremy, we've got a bit of a delay here, as people yeah. might guess. This is kind of like when they do satellite <laughs> in interviews from, say, the Middle East. You know, it, 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 there's always that you, bit of a delay Hughes back that. and forth. Yeah, we got Hughes not going <laughs> exactly. <there. laughs> well, and you know, one thing that I would add before I get to your, your question um, is that you know what we have found with the travel industry is that probably 95% of the inconveniences, problems, whatever you want to call them, that people experience on a vacation can be minimized or eliminated completely if they know what to expect in advance. It's, it's setting those expectations. And um, a lot of times, especially with cruise travel, where, where I am right now, what will happen is a first-time cruiser, and I've met several on this cruise, that didn't use a travel agent. They booked it themselves, and they weren't told those little nuggets of advice before they got on the ship. And so they didn't know where to go for dinner or how things work. And I've seen some people that were frustrated because they didn't understand how things operate, and nor should they be expected to. And that's where I can bridge that gap. And I can't guarantee that it'll be a perfect vacation every single time because we're all human. 
but I can mitigate a lot of those problems by just telling you, okay, here's how dining works. Don't freak out when you see a long line the first night, it'll be gone in five minutes. You know, there's a great example. So anyway, I, I wanted to throw that in, but I think your question was, um, where, where did, how did I get into travel? Yes. Yeah. What, what led you to travel? You've had a very storied career and uh, you know, what, <laughs> what, <laughs> what led you there? You know, so the, the travel business was not something that I set out to do, nor did I ever think um, when I was growing up or when I was in college that this would be something that would be my career. Uh, I was actually a radio guy from the age of 15 was my first professional broadcast on a radio station in deep East Texas, Kicks 105. How you doing? Uh, and then I kind of bounced around the United States on the radio. I, I worked in Houston, I worked in Boston, I worked in Philadelphia, I worked in Las Vegas. And, um, you know, all of those different places were part of my radio career. And I, you know, I traveled, I went on vacation to be certain, but I never, ever considered it as a career. Now, back up a little bit, my dad, when I was growing up, I uh, traveled extensively for work. He went all over the world. And one of the first things that my parents did, and I, I was probably, gosh, five or six years old, they bought me a globe, an old fashioned globe. And wherever they would travel, they would show me on the globe. And then when they were in Thailand or Japan or the Philippines, I would have a daily itinerary. And it was my job at home to find that on the map. And that's how I learned my geography uh, was with their world travels from the time I was four, five, six years old, all the way through when my dad retired and I was lucky enough to get to go with him on several of those trips and I got to see the world as a kid and and, and you know Jeremy in all honesty I wish I could go back now and see it through my adult eyes because you know kids we don't appreciate it as much as we should um, so it was it was um, something I wish I could have a do over on but anyway um, about I guess Three or four years before the end of my radio career, I realized that I wanted to transition out of that industry and I wanted to own my own business. And I knew that I wanted to do that, but I didn't know what. And I was in a unique position because most entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs, if you want to call them that, um, they, they have the, the idea, but they don't have the capital. And I was in the exact opposite place. I, I had the money saved to start a business. I just didn't know what I wanted to do. And we looked at everything under the sun, every franchise you can imagine. We had a restaurant concept that we really liked, but do you really want to put a quarter of a million dollars, half a million dollars into a place and, and just hope for the best? I'd never been in that industry. And then one day uh, I had a meeting with somebody you and I both know, Scott McAllister, and he was helping me brainstorm ideas that we both sat down at the table and we both said travel. And we just went, well, wait a minute. You're the guy people call when they want to go somewhere and they'll say, hey, I'm going to New York City. What show should I see? What hotel should I stay at? We said, why not monetize that? And we knew nothing about the travel industry. And I mean nothing. We just thought, you know what we'll do? We'll tack on a fee and we'll, we'll give you advice. And little did we know that we could actually make commissions and that, that, that they would actually pay us to take care of the customers. And we had no idea, but we learned pretty quickly. And the next thing you know, this, this company was born. Uh, we came up with the idea that day. We sat at that table at that restaurant for the next, I think, six hours, brainstorming company names and concepts and ideas and how we were going to do all this. That was in August. We were open the following January, and, and that's kind of how this whole thing was born. Yeah. Great story. I don't think I knew that story. Um, what, what would you say is the biggest challenge in regards to small business owners? You know, we talk about you being the fun advisor and, and you being in the travel industry. Um, you know, what is the biggest challenge with those that are self-employed taking time off of themselves? Well, and I think that part of the problem is, is, you know, and, and as a small business owner, I completely understand there's times where the, the, the business gets in the way. And I mean, there's no other way to say that. Um, you know, it's actually kind of funny with my business. I can sit in the office all week long and have a very, very slow week. The minute I go to a conference or get on a cruise ship or go on my own vacation, the phone rings off the hook. It's as if people know that that's when you're, when you're running out to play. Um, but what I would tell people is, is find places to do it. Uh, I'm a big theater fan, as you know. And so I subscribe to a couple of uh, the packages downtown Houston. And I, that's my time away. Um, when I go on the cruise ships, yes, I'm, this is work also because if I take a picture of Emerald's Bistro behind me and post it online, somebody's going to go, oh, I want to go on that ship and try Emerald's Restaurant. But at the same time, I find the time to relax as well. And I think that's, you've got to find that balance. Uh, 
and it can be tricky. But I also think that the, the other trick to that is do what you enjoy. And getting away to the theater might only be two to three hours of turning the phone off, but it's something that I absolutely love. And if you're going to spend the money on a vacation, let's find the one that is, if you're going to take seven days to yourself or two days to yourself, that is the one you really want to do. Um, I go to a cruise conference every year, Jeremy, and they talk about the 299 cruise because people will see an advertiser cruising from 299 and they go, ooh, I want to go on the 299 cruise. You say, do you know where it goes? No. Do you know what ship it is? No, it's just 299. Well, that's all well and good, but how about if you're really going to take that time, let's find the right vacation for you. I don't want to make you spend the most money, but I also don't want you to spend the least amount of money and not get what you really want. And so that's kind of, I know that's a long-winded answer to that question, but I think the trick is find the time, but also do something you love as much as your job. That's yeah, uh, that 299 cruise, the life raft with the picnic basket, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, if that's great, yeah, I think I think being able to enjoy it, I think, is a big part of of that that because you then you can actually relax and refresh, and you know, as a small business owner, taking that time out is is really important. You know, for those that maybe are struggling with getting that time um, to be able to go do something that they love, what would you say would be a first step? I think the first step is well, maybe two, and one of them will be self-serving, but call your travel agent, uh, let them help you. But I think the first step is to decide that, you know, you deserve it and that you, that you should take the time and that, um, that it's okay to say, I'm on vacation or these next two hours, I'm not available. And what I usually do with my customers is I'll say, I'm sorry, I was, I, I'll explain what I was doing. And I've never had anybody say, well, you don't deserve that, or you shouldn't have done that. They'll say, oh, yeah, 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 no problem. Contact me. In fact, I've got a Disney consultation. We were supposed to chat the night before I got on the ship, and she had something come up. And I said, well, I'm sorry, I'm gone the next week. No problem. Call me when you get back. As long as you're transparent about it. Um, you know, I think that people fear, oh, I'm going to miss out, you know, if, if I don't take this call right now, they're not going to buy something from me. Now, if it's a first time person calling, yeah, I'll return that call right away. But if it's a regular customer or somebody that I know I can, I can say this to, I'll say, listen, I'm out of the office tomorrow, but I'll reach out to you the next day. And as long as that call or email doesn't go completely unanswered, they'll be there for you. At least that's been my experience. Now, back to that first step, call your travel agent. And the reason I say this is, or call somebody you trust. And make sure you find, as we talked about, that vacation that's going to make you happy. Because the last thing I want you to do is spend 10 grand on a vacation that you're miserable. You know, for example, I'm, I'm not a beach person. Beach vacations are not my thing. If they're your thing, great. Cruises are my thing. So I'm not going to go spend 10 grand to go to Hawaii and sit on a beach somewhere. Just not my thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I don't want you to just go buy that vacation because, oh, look, it's pretty and shiny. Let's find the one that works for you, whether it's a cruise, taking your family to a theme park, going to Alaska like Jeremy did. You know, and, and your wife did a brilliant thing. And this is kind of going back to your question earlier. You took the time off from your coaching and from your community, but your wife did something nice for you and upgraded you a little bit to make the experience even more special. And those are the little things that I quite frankly think you deserve. You and if you're going to take the time, do it right. You know, don't do the two ninety nine just because it's a pretty shiny price. Let's get you what you deserve and get you the the, the vacation that's going to make you happy. Yeah, that was um, it. Was actually it went Alaska. Alaska was great though. It was uh, the one out of New Orleans where she up right. there, we were on the Norwegian. I think it was a getaway, and we were in the haze. Yes. And I had no idea mm -hmm. how we were bypassing. She's just walking me through the line. And, you know, I get to the front and there's people sitting there waiting on me hand and foot. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? And the whole time, <laughs> the whole time you and her were, were concocting this plan and it, it made for an amazing experience. And, and uh, I appreciate that. And that's that's another reason why I like you, Chris, is because you do those things and you work, work those things out. So I thought that was awesome. Um, what was your biggest challenge you, you faced? Do you think just personally as a business owner, what's the biggest challenge? Well, I think the easy answer is this past 15 months. Um, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic has certainly been challenging for all of us, regardless of your industry. We've all been touched by it in some way. And 
the biggest challenge for us has been keeping up because when everything happened, and it's funny, Jeremy, I was on a cruise ship when the industry shut down. And then I was on the first sailing back of that same cruise line out of Galveston. So I kind of book into the pandemic on vacation, if you will. And the biggest challenge was when we shut down in March, keeping up with everything that was happening and all the changes and all of the different rules and protocols, you know, we thought we were going to be shut down for a couple of weeks, then it turned into a month and then two months and then three months. And we were hopeful every time that this would be the time we would get back. And now we finally are, but it took a lot of work and that was a huge challenge. And then I would also say that just quite simply staying in business. Um, I know of a travel agency personally that I just found out yesterday, a friend of mine shut down because of COVID-19 um, and just couldn't, couldn't make a go of it. And we were very, very blessed in that we have little to no debt. We have no overhead in the sense of we do, do not have a storefront. Um, so yes, we were paying out money when none was coming in for 15 months, but we managed to survive. And I, and I think that might've been our biggest challenge and maybe our, our biggest win as a company, um, is that we made it through that because I think a lot of people don't realize, you know, I'm not on any kind of salary. It's 100% commission. And so for those 15 months when nobody was booking anything, we weren't making any money. And on top of that, there were times where we were paying money back because people would get canceled and we don't get to keep the commission. Now, that's not true in every case, but that was certainly challenging because imagine if you did your job and then they came back to you and said, we want part of your salary back because the store isn't open or the business isn't open. And so I, I would imagine if you ask that question to a lot of business owners, that would be the answer right now. In normal times, I think our biggest challenge is getting people to understand that we have value, that we are not going to charge them fees and that they don't need to do it themselves when they can have an expert helping them. Yeah, no, I and I and I think you you answered you did answer the next question. The biggest success is is being able to weather that. And I think there's there's a huge lesson in that because if it's not COVID, it's Harvey or it's a 9-11 or it's a financial market meltdown, it's there's gonna there's always gonna be the X factor. And as a business owner, you didn't know that it was specifically gonna be this, um, yet you were probably doing the right things along the way so that when something came like this, yes, it might've been a bit of a struggle to survive through it, yet it's also an opportunity because you never left. Yeah, I think that's a fair statement. And I, and it's, you know, none of us could have predicted this. None of us could have predicted 9-11. None of us could have predicted the, the things along the way. And certainly both of those were huge watershed moments within the travel industry. Um, but, you know, it comes back to setting that expectation and kind of twisting that a bit towards this goal. And that is having your company in the, in the um, position to be able to weather those storms. Because like you said, they are going to come. There's absolutely no doubt of that. Coronavirus will not be the last thing that will challenge the travel industry. There will be something else down the road. I certainly hope it's not nearly as bad as this, but there will absolutely be some challenge. And it's how we face it and how we address it. And I, and I think that there's two prongs to that. One of them is you have to have your company in the position to do so, but I think you also have to do it with full transparency. And to me, that's a huge part of what our company does. Um, you know, for better or for worse, I will sometimes say things that maybe as a travel advisor, I shouldn't say. Um, you know, if, they, if you read my blogs that I've been doing since we got on the ship, there are times that I have called Carnival out and said, you need to address this or this or this. And the reason I do that is I, I don't want to say it's all puppies and roses and unicorns. And then I have a customer get on and say, well, wait a minute, they did this or that or the other. I'm going to say, look, this is something we need to address. And, and none of it's been anything major right now, just little things here and there. But I, I wouldn't be an honest advisor if I didn't tell people that. And uh, I think that that's important. And, and honestly, most of the brands that I work with have been incredibly transparent about what they're doing during the pandemic. The ones that have not been are ones that are not going to be getting business from me and my customers. And quite frankly, may not be in business a year from now because the travel advisors and the traveling community have gone, we don't like how you did this, how you handled this. And so I think those are both really important aspects of surviving this type of storm. You know, and the same thing with hurricane season, Jeremy, you and I both know, we're both new homeowners. Uh, you, you've got to be prepared when the storms are heading your way. 
you need to make sure that your your house is prepared. And it's the same thing with your business. You know, I, I think that's a, it, it, I wish I thought of that analogy earlier, but I think it's really true. And buy flood insurance. All right. Um, so the Mardi Gras. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> Mardi Gras. You're, you've got a uh, Emerald's Bistro deck back there behind you. Tell me, tell me about the ship. Tell me some of the highlights uh, of the trip so far. Okay. Well, how much time do you have? Because uh, this is certainly the largest of Carnival ships. Uh, this is a new class of ship for Carnival. It's called the Excel class, and this is the first of three that are planned for now. The first one is Mardi Gras, which was named after Carnival's original ship from 1972. And I actually had dinner last night directly across from a photo of that ship. And it, it's amazing to, the comparison of the two. Uh, Scott and I are going to do a show. Um, I know this is going to live in perpetuity, but uh, tonight, uh, August 17th, we're doing a live show. And one of the first slides we're going to show is the 1972 Mardi Gras and the 2021 Mardi Gras. And the comparisons are unbelievable. Um, but this ship is uh, the first in its class. The celebration will come next. We don't know the name of the third ship yet, but I think Carnival wouldn't be a bad guess if you want to go with history. And this ship is unlike anything Carnival has done before. If you've been on one Carnival ship, you've been on them all in the sense that they are generally speaking laid out in a very similar flat, uh, fashion. You kind of always know where the comedy club is. You always know where the main theater is. You always know where the main dining room star. It, they, they're very familiar. Now they each have their own personality and their own features, but you can kind of work your way around. You come on Mardi Gras and you got to learn everything from scratch. And, and I mean that in the best possible way because they have taken this and totally rearranged and rethought how they do things. And what they have on this ship is six distinct zones or neighborhoods, if you will. I'm actually in the French Quarter right now. So behind me, as you can see, is Emerald's Bistro 1396. The number, if you like trivia, comes from this ship's number in the shipyard. When they build a new ship, they assign it a number. Mardi Gras was 1396 for the, uh, I believe it was St. to build the ship. Um, so Emerald's Bistro 1396 is behind me. And it's part of the French Quarter. If I go around the corner this way, I'm at the Fortune Teller Bar, which is a bar that does um, New Orleans-style craft cocktails with a kind of mysterious twist. Some of them are smoking. Some of them are in crystal balls. And then next to it is I, maybe my favorite lounge on the ship, the Brass Magnolia. Uh, they have live music in there. But the light fixtures are forms. There are literally trumpets in the ceiling. There are trombones hanging on the wall with lights sticking on it. It's incredible, the decor in that lounge. And so that's just one zone is the, uh, the French Quarter. If I go around the uh, corner from the French Quarter, I'm in Grand Central. Now, those of you that have been on a Vista class ship out of Galveston on the Vista, one of my complaints about that ship is, and I, and I love the Vista, but the atrium is enclosed. And so when you walk on that ship, there's not the ocean. You've just got this lobby, for lack of a better word. They have fixed that and then some on this ship. You walk into Grand Central, and it is a floor-to-ceiling, probably, if I had to guess, 100 feet or more wide um, glass wall that looks out into the ocean, and it's several decks overlooking it. And then in the evening, video screens come down from the ceiling and from the floor and create a wall of digital video, and they do shows in front of it. Last night, it was uh, Jeff Tavaggia, who is a, a juggler. Uh, my friend Chuck uh, Wagner, who's a Broadway performer, was on the ship for two weeks doing shows and that. But it allows them to have two main theaters, basically. Uh, and so that neighborhood has the shops, has the coffee shop, uh, the cherry on top candy shop. And then here's one, Jeremy, for you. Do you ever expect to see a roller coaster on a cruise ship? Because we've got one. And yesterday was National Roller Coaster Day. Oh, wow. um, up in the, the ultimate playground is what it's called. They've got the, the putt putt golf that you see on cruise ships. We've got um, ropes course. They've got all sorts of foosball tables, pool tables, and things like that. But Bolt is the big feature up there, and it is the first roller coaster at sea. Two passengers ride on it, and it goes all the way around the funnel on this ship. And this ship's funnel is super sized, and so you—I um, don't know how long the course, the, the, the entire ride is, but uh, it's pretty impressive. And then you've got other zones. You've got a La Piazza, which is Italian, which is where the pizzeria and Cucina del Capitano. So they've broken it up into neighborhoods. Um, but this ship has a ton of new restaurants to try. There's one called Chibang, which is part Chinese, part Mexican food. And you have tasting menus from both sides that you can try. Uh, they've got a lot of new features on this ship that really make it exciting. 
And then it's so large, there's so much extra space. And I, and I really appreciate that. Yeah, I noticed the uh, the one that kind of caught my attention. It was kind of like the street is like the street food and street I mean, eats. Yeah. And, and you're posting the different fries that come out. And, and I'm a guy that's on a fast right now. So every day I'm, I'm seeing the future <laughs> of amazing fries uh, that are done different ways. Yeah. So they street eats is a new concept for this ship as well. And it is complimentary. And it's up on the Lido deck. It's next door to the seafood shack. So you've got four options in a row right there. Now the seafood shack's a la carte, but it's you know lobster rolls, shrimp, oysters, that kind of thing. But then you go to Street Eats, and there are three different booths. And I haven't memorized the names of them yet, but one of them is basically different takes on French fries. Another one is, um, gosh, I could open my phone and list them out. But there's these three different booths, and every day they have a small plate. It's usually a bite or two of something different. And one of them might be bao buns and another one might be a chicken satay. They had a um, kebab one day and every day the food changes and you can wander up there and get one from each, two from each, three from each, whatever you like. Uh, so what I've been doing on our posts on our company Facebook is every day going up there. And if I'm not trying it, I'm at least taking a picture of the different food each day. So over seven days, we'll get 21 different little small plates at these street eats places and it's kind of cool jeremy they make it right there for you so you come up and they put together the little plate and, and hand it to you uh and so that's another one of the new dining concepts on board and and i can't forget my buddy Shaq. so for those that don't know shaquille o'neal is the cfo which is not financial it's the chief fun officer for carnival cruise line which is an interesting choice because i'm not sure he fit on the ship certainly not in my shower um and not, not that i want Shaq in my shower with me but uh that's one of the discussions <laughs> um that's a whole other conversation but uh shaquille o'neal is the, the the chief fun officer for carnival cruise line and one of the things that he has done is brought his restaurant big chicken on board this ship and, and it's also on a couple of the other carnival ships now and Big Chicken is just as you'd expect. I think Guy's Burger Joint, but with chicken. And it's actually where I had breakfast this morning, believe it or not. They, um, you know, one of the things people say on a cruise ship is, I, I want breakfast past 10 a.m. The Shaq's got you covered. So does Emeralds, by the way. They had breakfast here as well. And I, I had lunch here the other day. And uh, Emeralds Barbecue Shrimp, which is one of the things he created in, in uh, I believe, at Commander's Palace back in the day, uh, is available here. They have muffalettas. They have po' boys. They have red beans and rice, all the New Orleans staples that you would expect, bananas foster. Uh, so uh, this is another little a la carte restaurant, but I mean, honestly, the prices are, are, are extremely reasonable, certainly for Emerald's food. That's, that's great. And, and I know you're going to be, tell me a little bit about uh, the, the itinerary, because I know you're going to be doing a full show on this. Um, how can people catch that show? And how can people connect with you if they're thinking about traveling? Well, thank you for the plug on the show. Our show is called The Itinerary, and technically we're on summer hiatus from our first to second seasons. Uh, season two of the show, which is every Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Houston time or Central time, will debut in September. But this was too good an opportunity, so we're doing a special edition. For those who will be watching this the day it premieres, which is Tuesday, August 17th, we'll be live at 6 p.m. Houston time, assuming the internet works, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time. And we're going to be talking in depth about this ship and all of the different features on board. Uh, usually our show is, uh, if I may say so, fairly slick and well-produced when it works. But um, today, who knows what's going to happen? It may just be two guys yakking, but there's so much to talk about on this amazing ship. And we are going to share that. Um, you can watch the show live on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Premier Custom Travel. Or you can go to our website, premiercustomtravel.com, and it'll link you up with that. We also tend to put our shows, now this will be internet permitting as well, on our YouTube channel, and you can watch them on PCT TV on demand. Now, whether or not all that works is certainly up to the internet on a cruise ship, and uh, because it's done via satellite and the ship is always moving, sometimes it doesn't work out so well. Now, right now, I have a fairly stable connection, so we're actually in San Juan, Puerto Rico uh, right now, and you asked about itinerary, so I'm going to give you two answers, the one about our show and then where we're going this week. Uh, the ship left Port Canaveral on Saturday. Yesterday and Monday, or yesterday and Sunday, I got to go backwards. Uh, we were at sea both days. We're in San Juan, Puerto Rico today. Tomorrow, which I believe is Wednesday, uh, we're going to be in uh, Amber Cove, which is um, 
A port that Carnival developed in the Dominican Republic, or Puerto Plata. And so we're going to be visiting Amber Cove. Now, the first time I was in Amber Cove was years ago when they first built it, and not everything was done yet. So I'm excited to see that has changed. Uh, we'll have another sea day on Thursday, and then Friday we'll be in Nassau in the Bahamas, and then head back to Port Canaveral on Saturday. So that's where the ship's going this week. And Nassau is not a usual stop for this ship. Uh, we're not going to Grand Turk right now. And so Nassau is the substitute port for Grand Turk until they reopen their borders to cruise ships. And hopefully that will be relatively soon. I've got a fairly large group of folks sailing on this ship for Thanksgiving next year in 2022. And Grand Turk's on the itinerary. And I certainly hope by then we'll be able to visit that lovely island. Well, Chris, thank you for, for taking the time today. And if, if you're looking to travel, you know, call Chris and Chris can give you that evaluation and, and really identify that trip that's going to match up with your specific needs so that you can truly get away from your business, whether it's you taking the, the trip by yourself or with your family to make sure you have the greatest experience possible. And you can do that by vis visiting premiercustomtravel.com and you can also visit their Facebook page. And Chris, I just want to thank you again for taking the time today to be able to share just some really great insight um, into your, your business world. And I know that those listening um, will, will have received great value and, and we'll be doing monthly videos together and diving into other specific topics and other destinations that, that are out there that you could travel to. So I'm looking forward to those conversations. And Chris, thank you again. It's my pleasure, Jeremy. Thank you for having me. Thank you for all you're doing for small businesses. Believe me, we appreciate it. And I, I have to end by doing what's only appropriate with what's behind me. And that is, bam, see you later.